Hey guys, welcome back to 5 nothing 100 nothing.com. I am Fug It. And that stands for the fittest underdog guru using intelligent tactics. And today, guys, I want to talk to you a little bit about breakups and handling a breakup. Um, we all go through them, you know. And, um, you know, what they say for us undersized underdogs, it's better to have loved a small than never to have loved at all. I know it's a stupid joke, but I'm a dad, so those are dad jokes. Could be my next YouTube channel if this fails. Um, anyways, um, I was recently talking to my sister about a breakup I had, and she gave me um, some funny advice, and it was it's funny because it's actually accurate. Um, she said, um, get it out and keep it moving. And it, it broke my state where I was feeling kind of bummed out and everything. But I just laughed and I thought, well, that's pretty funny. And she said that um, it's one of her co-workers um, had come up with that. And I thought that was brilliant. So I wanted to give her a shout out and uh, let her know that um, that helped a lot. But anyways, um, you know, when you're going through a breakup, um, I think that there's some stages that you go through, you know, stages of healing and, and whatnot. And like one of the first things you might feel uh, is anger, you know, especially if um, you were cheated on or uh, it just came out of nowhere and you feel a sense of betrayal. Um, if you were the one that caused the breakup, it could be um, a sense of regret, you know, and you just feel like awful about yourself and, you know, whatever happened and you take that on yourself and, you know, it throws you into a tailspin as far as, um, you know, your self-esteem and, you know, just, you know, re-examining yourself all the time and wishing you had done things differently and playing moments over and over in your head. Um, and, you know, sometimes if that's the case, it could lead to you to feel like a sense of panic, like, oh, I got to fix this. I got to get in touch with them. I have to do something. Um, and now if you've been the one who, you know, offended the other and, you know, you want to at least make things right and apologize and maybe not um, restore the relationship, but maybe just to kind of give yourself closure, maybe give that other person a sense of closure, um, you know, maybe reach out to them and uh, apologize. You know, that's the right thing to do. Sometimes it's good to do it right away and other times it's better to wait and let the, um, you know, temper simmer a little bit. So, you know, you handle that the way you need to with your particular situation. Um, and let's say, you know, it's still relatively fresh for you, you might feel a sense of loneliness. And, you know, it's a really good time, though, to reconnect with friends, family, um, those who maybe, you know, you put on the back burner as you were, you know, so madly in love and, you know, doing your thing. And um, it's a good time to reach back out to people that maybe you shunned or didn't spend as much time with um, in an effort to um, spend it in your relationship. So, you know, your friends and family, you know, they, they're they there for you and they'll always be there for you if this is your first breakup or your hundredth and whatever. So think about those things, you know. Um, there's also like a sense of loss, you know. Um, I think a lot of that as well is that your normal, you know, patterns or habits are broken. You know, especially if you had like regular dates, um, let's say you lived with the person and, you know, there's things all around you that remind you of them. And, um, you know, the best thing to do is not necessarily throw those things out, although I know I've done that in the past, um, because then when you kind of come back to an emotional center, um, some of those things, you know, you don't, you know, let's say you restore the relationship, you're going to wish that you had kept the things that, you know, reminded you of the relationship because those memories will now be gone if you just simply toss it all out or, you know, delete photos and, you know, all these things that remind you of the other person. You know, just if it bothers you, put the stuff aside. Um, don't make that mistake of throwing it out because you never know if you might repair or want to restore that relationship. Um, but yeah, your patterns are broken and, you know, it's you don't know what you're doing anymore. I mean, it's like um, if you have a career for 10, 15 years and all of a sudden, you know, your life changes in a day and then all of your daily patterns and habits and things that you do are now like just out of control, like just different. And that could be an adaptation process. So sometimes you'll miss the person and other times you just miss the pattern and what it meant, you know, in your life, you know, just the... um 
you know, the daily routine. And, you know, we feel security when we have routine and we have consistency and predictability, but that can also get old as well. So, you know, think about those things. Um, the other thing is, and this is a really hard one, but don't try to replace that person right away. You know, I mean, what's the old saying? And I think it's the worst advice you can get is um, the best way to get over somebody is to get under somebody else. And, you know, it's very um, shallow. It's um, it's very empty feeling. Once you do that, you know, it might restore your um, sense of self-worth for a moment. Um, but then you realize they're not that person. They're not the replacement. Um, and if you end up jumping into something really soon after or you transition from your current to the new one um, and you leave unresolved feelings and emotions to deal with, um, yeah, you know, I think it's an effort to escape pain. You know, you're trying to replace that person and not lose that feeling of safety, security. And, you know, it's never good because one is you're going to be comparing your ex to your new person if they... Uh, so happen to want a relationship as well with you um, but the thing is is that you might have standards or things about that person that you um, really adored and those patterns that you had with the person whether or whether or not you wanted the breakup and now you're projecting all of those things and um, the ghosts of your relationships past and you know the injustices and all of that on this new person and you've got to heal. You've got to be whole and complete in yourself um, and deal with those emotions and deal with if you want to try one more time or what have you with the other person. Because if you just jump in, it's going to possibly um, be your next breakup. So trust me on that one. Um, what's the best way to handle it then? You know, what do you do about everything? Um, you know, you, you want to grieve the loss. Let's say that things aren't going to get restored whether it's your decision or theirs, um, you know, don't be afraid to just sit and cry, you know. Don't try escapism for the moment, you know. Just let yourself feel the pain, you know. Let yourself cry. Let yourself, um, you know, call friends and talk about, you know, the good and the bad. Um, learn from those mistakes that you made. Um, learn what, how your boundaries can be better next time if, you know, you felt um, offended and, you know, where are your shortcomings um, in your own character and who you are as a person and work through those things and, you know, make yourself um, aware of it, um, feel the grief and the pain of it, and then get past that. Um, and by getting past that, I mean, like, focus on you, you know, what makes you happy? You know, in any relationship you enter into, um, you bring something to the table and the other person brings something. And um, sometimes you give up some of yourself and sometimes a lot of yourself um, in an effort to make the other person happy. And think about those things that you gave up in your last relationship. What do you? What is it that you like to do? Um, maybe it's you need to work more on your business. You know, maybe you've let things professionally kind of go by the wayside in an effort to spend more of your free time with, you know, the person you loved. So working on your business and maybe, you know, maybe building that new business or starting, you know, really getting on your hustle, your side hustle, your purpose, working on those things that can give you um, a sense of healing and moving on in what is it inside you that you've been wanting to do or that you've neglected and you need to get back to. So, you know, work, especially as a man, um, you know, working on your purpose is huge, 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 huge in your healing and restoring your sense of self-worth and self-awareness. So doing that, um, let's say business is great and you already spend enough time on things or you're a workaholic, maybe you need a hobby, you know? Um, I have a cousin who likes to paint. Um, I have a sister who likes to design um, different types of frames, pictures, bags uh, with cork, like uh, for instance, wine corks, etc. cetera. Um, and, you know, loves that as her escapism, as her side hustle, her hobby. Um, but everybody has that something, you know, maybe you've always wanted to play an instrument. Well, now's a great time. You got lots of time to do it. It's a good, healthy distraction. And it's something that's going to help you to, um, you know, challenge yourself in different ways. And maybe there's things out there that you've been wanting to try. And now is a great time to do it before life gets busy again or you fall back in love 
with either the ex or somebody else. So think about that, you know. And again, connecting with old friends. Um, sometimes you may not have a hobby or any interest that you particularly like to do. Well, there's no better time to then spend some time with your friends and doing some of the things they like to do. And, you know, even if it's just escapism or you might find that you have a new passion for something. You know, if you haven't been in the gym, get in the gym again, you know, work on your nutrition a little bit, um, you know, make yourself... Um, more appealing to the people you're trying to attract you know be a better you and you know you can never um, overstate or the um, the importance of exercise on your mental emotional and physical health it is it does wonders for you um, the hardest part of the stages of healing and moving on is that let's say you still love that person and you don't know how to fix the relationship you don't know how to move past it um, but you know that right now uh, either you or that person are not in a healthy place to try again or maybe some water needs to go under the bridge one or both of you needs to date some other people um, and sometimes in over time you know and a little water goes under the bridge you heal or they heal and you know the hardest thing to the advice somebody ever gives you is, well, never say never. And you want it right now. You want, you don't want distance to come between. You don't want time, space, or, you know, you have an insecurity that they might meet somebody else or find somebody else. And then what about you? Well, the truth is if they find somebody else and they're happier with them, that's good. Because if you really love them unconditionally, then you love them enough to let them go. And if it's something where that connection that you two had was strong enough and circumstance happens and whatnot, then you can try again. But in the meantime, you can't sit and wait for them. You can't be the same person. You've got to work on you and be a better you. And if that other person is working on themselves and maybe they do go out and date or um, you know, they do a, a hit it and quit it type of thing for a little while, whatever it might be. Um, but you grow as a person. I've had this happen too in relationships where I um, really, really wanted to salvage the relationship and the other person um, wanted nothing to do with me for a period of time. And I grew and got better. And I've done that a couple times in my life where I've switched careers and just grown and um, moved on. And then that person comes back and I'm a completely different person. And I'm gr I've grown, I've changed, I've evolved, and I didn't want uh, anything to do with them anymore because I wasn't the same person that they knew when the, the breakup happened. So never say never. It might come back around again, but you got to carry on. Um, with your happiness as your number one priority with you know be selfish be um, you know in your center and don't let anything throw that off you know continue to grow and it's not easy it's very painful to do um, it's one of the hardest things you'll do and you know sometimes it's day to day sometimes it's minute to minute where you've got that sinking feeling in your gut like you're gonna die um, and nothing feels normal food doesn't taste good um, you see something on TV or you go to a normal place you used to go and it's not the same anymore because you did it with somebody else um, give it time just give it time um, you're not gonna die over it even though you feel like you're going to um, I've said this before and I've, I've lost uh, both of my parents um, they're both passed away now and and this sounds really bad and it's not to say I didn't love my parents I definitely did but um, a breakup in a way can be worse than the death of somebody um, and I think the the reason that is is that when you have um, when you lose somebody um, to illness disease or they just simply die um, it, it's final there's closure um, when you love somebody with all your heart and they're still alive and you may still have to see them via social media or maybe you work with them or somewhere or you run into them they're still alive and you don't completely have the closure it's still um, in a sense for a period of time an open wound and I found breakups to be in a lot of ways harder than um, losing friends or family to death um, but at the end of the day guys you've got to learn 
to love, care, and respect yourself. You know, um, to be better, the better version and the best version of you um, for that next person or for that ex if they come back or if you decide you want them back. Um, so yeah, great advice, sis. Get it out and keep it moving. All right, guys, 5 nothing, 100 nothing.com. Fug it out and figure it out. All right, guys, take care of yourselves. Comment, subscribe. Don't dislike. Continue to follow. And wish you guys the best today. Go get it. You're going to survive. It's okay. It's the world's full of people. There's billions out there with your name on them. Go get it, guys. Take care.